Oh no! Uh, get off my face. Those giants really freak me the f out. I just made a huge mistake. Jesus. Shit, shit, made a huge mistake. Oh, I made another mistake. All right, time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Run away. <coughs> Gotta go fast. Run away. I'm following you, homie. I don't know where I'm going this way. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, I fucked. I fucked it. I think I fucked it. Oh no, here it is. Okay. I'm gonna get this and get out. Get in, get out, get out, get out, get out, and get out. I didn't even need that. That wasn't even worth it. Get in, get out, 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 it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done I don't know why I grabbed that armor set. I didn't need it. Oh. 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 Where am I? Oh, I wonder if they can climb ladders. I hope they can't. This is legit getting on my nerves. Oh shit, that's an even worse place to go right now. I just want a cooperator. Oh, there it is. There it is. Please be nearby. Willie Fernando. <laughs> Excuse me. The bell ringer woman appeared, of course. Let's get the fuck out of here. I don't remember where the bell ringer is in this spot. Oh my god, I almost didn't know that at all. I love how everybody has the scythe weapon. No, 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 I don't need to go over there, guy. Come on. Aw, oh, man. Come on, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Come on. Oh, god damn, this game is deep. Mm. I was about to Dark Souls 2. Oh, I don't know. There, I mean, you I, say that. To this day, I'm still seeing weapons and spells I've never seen before 
of my time playing. I'm talking about story and shit, bro. Oh, the stories... All the stories are pretty deep. Although this one is a little bit more harder to tell, like, what's going on. Because there's a lot going right on. Back. All of that, I think. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> you know what? I gotta update my title. New game plus uh, level one to thirty two. <sighs> oh, wait, what am I doing? Okay. Uh, I guess we're not getting anybody else. So. Oh, more whiffing. Oh. Shit, I wonder if my Carol rune is set to poison resist for this fight. I will say this. This game has me wanting to write my first video game review. Your first? In a very long time. Oh. What's so interesting about this game? What, 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 what I find interesting about this game, and, and keep me abreast if any of your audience says anything interesting for this discussion, okay. is that this is not a game that should have a broad mass market appeal. This is not a game that fits the template of what gets massively awesome reviews in today's modern gaming press. This is not a game that... I mean, for, for, one, for, for lack of a better word, this is not a game that waits. <laughs> um, and I say that... You know, understand, understanding I say this with the, with, with the understanding that I respect thoroughly everything that from software and atlas and uh, with the series from the very first time, from from the beginning and it is to me 
it's just, it's, it's. How do I put this? You know, to me, it, it's, it's a remarkable game because it doesn't attempt to appeal to the mainstream market. It isn't for everybody. It has become a killer app. It has become that game that you have to get a PlayStation 4 for because you have to be able to play this game. Right. I would and say that this that console is worth this one. You know, and, and how... How did From Software pull that off? Why is this... Um... Uh, why is this game, which is yet another spiritual successor of a series of games that has almost, without shame, pushed away casual players, has pushed away people of lesser abilities? How has this... <clears throat> how has it, you know, managed to garner so much critical oh, appeal how has it managed to garner the following that it has I think these are all very important questions especially when we look at you know it's kind of interesting to me because what are the next games that people are looking at now we're talking about how do you <laughs> How do you how do you gesture quickly? Um, I don't know. I don't ever do it. Sometimes I do it randomly. Um, and I don't. It's not. I don't. I don't know. <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. You're supposed to hold. Yeah, it gives you all these little things that you're supposed to do. Yeah, I think if you hold circle and do it, and no, that doesn't work. Triangle. I need to use a blood vial and do it. This no. dude's beasting. There's a way to do it, but it's it's not it's not user friendly. It's just, if you want to gesture, you just got to push the touchpad. Basically. Fat rolling my way up out of that bitch. Yup, yup. All right, now I can go to so Odin's I would. chapel. Oh, wow, that dude straight backstabbed that motherfucker. Yo, I'm gonna go to Tomb of Odin because I feel like I'm missing something there. There's supposed to be, there's supposed to be uh, Amelia, Amelia, right? Let's see. I think this guy is doing a straight dash for that, actually. Okay, how to join. <coughs> Eileen's side quest, that's the one where you get the Blade of Mercy. Meet her in Central Yarnum. Oh, regardless of meeting her in Central Yarnum. She will be outside the Cathedral Ward looking over the balcony. After clearing most of the Cathedral Ward to the point where you create a shortcut between the Grand Cathedral and the Cathedral Ward, talk to her and she will mention a mark she is hunting. Return to the Hunter's Dream, then travel to the Cathedral Ward lamp. To the Tomb of Odin lamp. Wait. Tr travel from the Cathedral Ward Lamp to the Tomb of Odin Lamp on foot. Because if Eileen is hunting her <coughs> mark, the lamp will not be operational. Help Eileen kill her mark and you will receive her praise and the approval gesture. It is important that you can hit Eileen and she can die, which will ultimately end her side quest. The next time you need to help Eileen will be after the ROM boss fight. Be sure to talk to Eileen after every boss to prevent her from going hostile. As it is 
unsure at which point she decides to be aggressive. The Beckoner has begun the final battle. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So what is this? This is Vicar Amelia. Ooh. Did you get the cutscene? No. Oh, that's unlucky. Well, when you do it, you'll get her cutscene, or the next time you help someone do it. Uh, if she sits up, and it looks like she's praying, like she sits back on her hind legs and she's praying or whatever, uh, yeah, you I have to go ahead. No, she'll, she'll do it later in the fight. She'll get really bright, and she'll sit up on her back her back legs and she'll put her hands in front of her like she's praying you can you got to go ham on her otherwise she's gonna heal and you'll notice her health start rising she does that like mid to late to, to late fight you can't you can't let her do that you can't have that it's ridiculous cathedral War. this guy's got a weapon that's so sick what is it I don't know what it is, but he's like sh shooting these like Why did I do that? If she looks at you, do not fight her 1v1, you will lose. Base and uh her the hitbox the hitbox on her tail is huge. So yeah. You can get some... You can stay a considerable distance away from her danger zone. It's a oh, zone she just, like, farted of danger. On Is she farting? She is fucking farting. What? I don't she think farts. she does that. I don't think she does that. I'm pretty sure she does, because I was whacking at her tail, and then there's, like, brown cloud just shot out, and I took damage. Uh, <laughs> I think she's more classy than that. <laughs> really? Yeah, hey, I can open really? the chest now. How, how exactly do you define the word? How exactly <laughs> do you define classy? A kin cold blood twelve? What the fuck? She's pretty classy. She's she's a class classy gal. Is she also fancy like Iggy Azalea? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, where does this go? This. Whoa, 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 bitch guy, bitch is going ham. Oh, what in the actual fuck? Nope. Nah, I made a mistake. I made a huge mistake. Nah. Okay, I think that's Upper Cathedral Ward, and I need to go there at the end of the game, because there's some good shit in there. There's a spell. Oh my god. Well, Just you wait until you, you hit one of the... You know, why don't I have a spell equipped? I have spells. Why is this bitch aiming at me? Summon a Breedus. There we go. I don't need to be here. Work that ass. I don't need to be here. I really don't need to be up here. Oh, bitch is gone down. Bitch is. Oh, shit. Not before it fucking knocking. Fucking stuffing out of me. <laughs> She's done. Oh. Oh, that sucks. Dude died. No. No, uh... The other co collaborator. Oh, okay. I was gonna say... I hate it when the host dies right when the when the boss is almost done. Well, that's good for a couple of other brothers. Fucking Lantern is a little bit overpowered. Those homing missiles will literally do a full 360 and come and hit you. Even if you dash past them. Where's, I wonder. It's up here. Let me make some adjustments yeah, this here. This dude is terrifying. Oh, um, if you want to know where you it, you bought that key for ten thousand, right? Yeah. Oh wait, you've already. Oh, out. you've already. Yeah. Holy shit! You're doing Amelia fight. Duh. Okay, to the left Duh. and right. Before the Amelia fight, you'll notice there's a pathway that goes left or right. 
Um, see if you can encourage your host to go over there because there, to the right, there are two hunter NPCs. And a bunch of stuff. And to the left, there is an entrance you can't actually go through. There's nothing over there. You have to go through that alone. Uh, Are you serious? Because th there is. I went down to the left one time. If you're by yourself, there. if you're by yourself, you can go through there. But if you're in a co-op, you can't. Oh, all right. So going back to. Let me. I want to. Uh, oh, you got me. Put this flame square no. up here. No, 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 no. Because I like the blunderbuss. That's my. Ooh, I should fix the durability of my sword. <coughs> so, going back to my discussion. Ah, oh, so, fuck. What well, gets it's me is. I think it's important to understand how and why this game is being so well received. Because the last one thing you have to understand is, is you're not like most people. Most people look at the games that you really enjoy and they're like, nah. <laughs> like, like, most people are way too casual for the kind of shit that gets you excited. Right. Um. But, let's see here. When, all right, at what point do I, all right, so I am, put one in both of these, so I'm at 23, 23 for vitality and endurance. Oh, I know what's up there, okay, I don't want to go up there yet. I want to, I want to check what's down here, I forget. I don't think there's anything worth coming over there for. Let's see, oh, the old guy with the... Fucking... Who's he? Oh, what's it? Isn't here yes. right now. What was over here? That was so important that I had to come. So over you know here. what's tripping me out? I see that there are four more awakening headstones. One, two, three. Three more awakening headstones on top of the one that I'm doing right now. Awakening headstones? And I, yeah. Awaken above. All right. So there's the Yarnum headstone, and then there's oh, awakening yeah. headstones. Okay, yeah, those so, are different areas. So, so what, what, what we're saying is, is that this game is absolutely huge. Not particularly. In its full scale, you'll, like, when you... Well, I don't know, maybe? I don't know, it feels, it feels kind of small? I don't know how to describe it. There's... There's a lot of lanterns. I don't know, it just, it feels small when you think of it as a whole, but there's also a lot of areas that I haven't explored as well. So, that's, that's what I have to do on this playthrough. One play of the here. things is, so... I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I'll be right back and I'm gonna hit some of these points that I've been thinking about. Okay, wait, there's a crow around here. Where is it? A monoc- oh, a um, what? I have that, don't I? Yeah, I have a monocular <laughs> already.
is that this game looks and sounds amazing. And I think that's important. Like, I have, I don't know about you, but I remember when I finally upgraded to a PlayStation 3 from the PlayStation 3. And just the aesthetic upgrade was mind blowing, you know? Yeah. Um, and when I finally end up getting a PlayStation 4, I kind of wanted that again. I wanted that mind-blowing, oh my god, this is something that I could have never done on my old system. But it never happened. And I remember, so for an example, we, we, we both played Ghost, and I remember you said that Ghost was ugly. Yeah. <clears throat> but I remember thinking, okay, Ghost looked good for what it was at the time. Um... I remember going to a friend who had a PlayStation 4 and playing it on the PlayStation 4 and thinking, wow, it looked almost the exact same. There were a couple of maps that were cleaner. Um, but, you know, since I got my PlayStation 4, everything that I've played, that's kind of been how it feels. It looked like the most physically advanced games that I ever played on the PlayStation 4 before Bloodborne at best looked like remastered versions of what you saw on the PlayStation 3. <laughs> yeah. You know, similar textures, maybe they ran a little bit smoother. Um, nothing that really just jumped out at me and said, hey, look at me, I am next gen. Um, And then this game comes out, and it's funny, I mean, the opening cinematic actually was kind of interesting to me because the opening cinematic didn't interest me, but then when it put, finally puts you in-game, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> and a lot. It has to be said for just the design. Uh, they take this beautiful, gothic, Victorian England city and they may I mean the the care with which is such that the city is like an extra character to the story that you're playing. Um, and you know to that extent I mean technologically the game is beautiful um art direction wise it's it's gorgeous and I mean I would say now after having my PlayStation 4 for six months, this is the first game that looks like a next-gen game to me. And, and it does it using some of the basic principles that went into making it like Demon Souls and Dark Souls. But... Whereas in Demon Souls and Dark Souls, the game kind of the games to me kind of looked ambitious but drab. On here, it's just stunning, <clears throat> and the sound is stunning as well. Like every the, the the sounds are gorgeous. The voice acting is amazing, and to me, you know, when I say the voice acting is amazing, it's not like. The analogy I came up with in my head earlier today was it's the difference between going and seeing a Tom Cruise movie and seeing a movie Gary Oldman is in. Like, <laughs> you don't have Nolan North or Troy Baker doing the voice acting for this. You don't have big Hollywood players doing the voice acting in this. Um, but at the same time, I think it's kind of a good thing, like, you know, it's not, you know, you go to a movie, you go to a Tom Cruise movie, you, you, you know you're watching Tom Cruise, whereas if you go to see a Gary Oldman movie, like, Gary Oldman just disappears into the background and becomes part of the tapestry of what you're watching, and this, the voice actor in this case does the exact same thing, it doesn't draw attention to itself, it just kind of facilitates what's going on.
So I mean, oh I, I think that's the start. I think one of the most interesting things about this game to me is that Bloodborne seems to It, 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 it looks for approval on video gaming's terms. And what I mean by that is... Have, did you ever play L.A. Noire? <laughs> no, I didn't. I know what it is, though. I, I just... It didn't appeal to me. Eleanor, which it was in its own right, a, oh great, where am I, where is this guy, really, oh, a belly woman has appeared somewhere, a belly woman rings a sinister bell, Alright, why did why did I get something in this game? And I can't find the host. And there is an evil woman ringing a bell. I am <laughs> mildly it, freaking out right now. It, it may or may not result in a, a summon, but given enough time it probably will. <laughs> The bell ringer woman, though, is up one of the side paths when you're going up the giant staircase. There is. There is a uh, ladder you can climb to, like, a little watchtower, and the bell ringer woman is up there. If you want to take her out. And he's sitting now. Why are you sitting? <clears throat> Is he where is he sitting down at? Like the box? Next to the lantern. He's oh. basically going through his gestures. Hmm. Alright. Yo, I feel like I got summoned into a piece of shit game. Well, if someone invades and he goes to fight it, then that's probably what he's doing, but I I can't imagine a lot of people would be doing that at your level. Right, you know what? Here's an easy way to do it. I'm just gonna go ham and kill things, and if I should die, then problem solved, right? <laughs> You guys got a scythe too? Mine's better. So oh. Coming behind me. What the fuck? He was playing to me. He's flanking me. Shit. Please don't. Please don't.
all taken care of. So, I don't know what PlayStation did, but they changed something about the Twitch. So, whenever I get a viewer, it increases the number of people. There it is. And it, it, tell, it shows me how many people are in... Okay, how do I... I don't know how to say this. So, for the past hour, I'd say, I, had, I have six viewers. But I don't actually have six viewers. It's just... Another person had joined, and it, it counts how many people have have been in here, which I think is a terrible. I think this. I think this is the worst. So, is there anyone watching you yeah. now? Let's see. According to my Twitch dashboard, I only have one person watching me. And mm -hmm. I remember it used to update. It used to update. It used to be okay if someone left, it would say that someone left. If someone joins, it'll say that someone's joining and is watching, and it doesn't do that anymore, and I really don't like that. It's like... It's like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe that, how I feel about that. I don't think it's good design. <laughs> no. And I think it's like innately discouraging, because it's constantly reminding you that there may not be anyone watching you at all. I'd rather have I'd rather have something display zero or one for myself than falsely make me think that there's other people watching me. Yeah. <sighs> I don't want to have to buy another capture card for the PS4. Well, not that I bought the last one, but yeah. Hi, Kazama. I know you're watching. That's you're the only one watching right now. I just I don't want to have to buy a capture card for the PS4. I really don't. So, back to my little discussion on this game. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I think one of the most impressive things about this game is that it, it seeks its, or it, it, it gets its successes on game game terms. And I brought up Eleanor, and this was a... The reason why I brought up Eleanor is because if you've ever played Eleanor, in Eleanor, you can skip the driving. You can actually make your partner do all the driving for you. You can skip the action scenes. You can fail all the interrogations. And you'll still get through to the end. You'll still see most of the... Con or you'll still see most of the story-driven content. <coughs> and to be honest with you, it's not that I even hate Rockstar or... Um, the actual developers for for having that mentality, I get they were what they were trying to do. They were trying to make this game as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. They were trying to sell this game as like an interactive movie. That and, and as such, you know, they had to try. They, they were trying to gain. They didn't want it, they wanted to get as, as broad of an audience as they could, and they didn't want anyone to put the game down because they didn't feel like they could actually keep up with the, the skill level. And to some degree, that's what gaming has done. That's where I mean, gaming has, for the past 10 to 15 years, been all about accessibility it's been all about trying to create a product oh I aggroed him Hold on <clears throat> it's been about making concessions easy modes auto save generous auto saves uh, being able to grind your way through campaigns that you pretty much can beat with all you have is a fault. <laughs> but the thing is, is that if you really stop and think about it, that philosophy, that mentality in game design is not what led to gaming becoming one a major form of entertainment to begin with. Because when I was a kid, <coughs> And to a lesser extent, you, you know, 
<clears throat> what was the big thing? It was the NES. And, you know, everyone knows that the NES was hard. In fact, there was a phrase called NES hard. NES hard? Be, huh? NES hard. Yeah. Or Nintendo hard. Like, it's... it's It's an acknowledgement, you know, the game is really hard, it's Nintendo hard. Which, you know, is, is, is a reference to the difficulty level of games of the NES era. But, here's the interesting thing about that. Back when I was a kid, we never thought of it like that. We didn't realize we were playing very, very difficult games. On some level, we knew that they were challenging, but the thing is, is we didn't, it wasn't a difference between, say, Demon Souls and Infamous, or, you know, it's what we were given, and I understand why we were given that, because Game development back then was still picking up, hev was still cribbing heavily off of arcade development. And arcade development was focused on, um, you know, the, the, if, I, if I were to sum up arcade development in one sentence, it would be deliberately unfair while providing the illusion of being fair. Because if you stop and think about it, what made money for an arcade game? It's ability to keep people pumping quarters into the machine. Well, if you want people pumping quarters in the machine, you can't design a game that someone could beat in one in one sitting. You can't design a game that someone could beat on one life. All right. So yeah, arcade games were <clears throat> deliberately unfair. But here is the interesting thing. When we go when we talk about the home console market, again, I think game development, game design was driven by what's going to get you the biggest profit. Now here is a, an interesting bit of history. Buying a video game back when the Nintendo was the prime video game system was not the same as buying a video game now. If you remember, well, I don't know if you remember. I don't. But back in, back in the days in the NES, you didn't buy video games in video game stores. You bought video games at toy stores. And video games as a commodity were ill understood at the time. <clears throat> um. So they had a very lax return policy, which I think played a very, even if subconscious or on a marketing level, as opposed to a, as opposed to a design level, um, you know, the, the, here, here is what would happen it, if you made your game too hard people didn't play your game you know but or, or no no you know if you if you made your game too hard there wasn't much of a video game media at the time <coughs> And as such, it's not like, you know, word was going to spread and people were going to not buy your game. However, if you did make your game too easy, and I've known people who have done this, if you make your game too easy, um, what would end up happening is if someone would beat the game, and then they would exchange it for a different game because this was something that you could do back in the 80s. <clears throat> oh, that one hit. 
I love this cutscene with Amelia. I'm doing Amelia right now. Um. So that was kind of a big deal. You could exchange you you when you returned a game. You could return it for a different game. And I think that had a huge effect on, on game development. I think that had a huge effect on the market. Because if you did not if you did not develop a game that could keep people satisfied for a significant amount of time, then They would, you know, if they could beat it in a weekend, then they would return it, and they would return it for the weekend. So you had to make a game that was ultimately challenging. And, and, and that, that's part of it. The other part of it is um, there, there wasn't nearly as much of a QA. Uh, mentality in, in game development which you may think is which may may stun you considering the fact that you know it's pretty much a common it's it's a given that whenever you get a game nowadays you're gonna have to patch it before you can even play it. <laughs> yeah no I, I I remember that there wasn't QA wasn't a big thing. Well, I mean, there were a lot of games. I mean, I a lot of games that were... Um... Okay. There was, you know, there were, there were a lot of games that just did not have quality QA. Say right, you know what comes to mind immediately is, is super pixel. You know, if you want a little bit of education on how bad QA was back in the days of the uh, kind of famous, system, go watch the Angry Video Game Party. I think I've seen it. I've watched a lot of his stuff. <laughs> of all, all the old, all the old uh, games, I loved watching that. You go and you watch what, he, what, what is required in order to beat that game. And it is, there is no way anyone would, would would beat that game straight up. But here's the thing, you know, games were hard. That's just how it was. And you know something? It encouraged a certain level of, uh... Oh wow, hold on, I'm in a new area. <clears throat> What's this? What's that glowing thing? Okay, that's the area you said you can't go through unless you're alone, right? I've come to yes. Farewell. I don't know what's on the other side. Oh, I know, I know. Um now to betray me. You know, but but No. This is but what you, never listen. you know, this is what resulted in uh you know, we made real-life communities around games back then because they were so challenging and they were so difficult and they were so... Um, they were so intentionally difficult. Understand, this is the, this is the game design philosophy that created a generation of people like me who grew up continue to keep video game as their as a prime form of entertainment and um you know and this is where we are oh shit okay this is a hunter he's a hunter with a lightning bolt oh you went down the right path yeah he has the ton yes. ton of trust that is the lightning weapon you can acquire that at some point there's two places to get it. 
One of them is from an endgame boss, and you can get it earlier, too. And I died. God damn. It's a unique trip weapon in that instead of transforming into something else, you <coughs> you charge it with lightning, and it will deal lightning damage. Mm. Oh, okay. You, you, like, flick it, so, and it'll be all shocky, like... So it always struck me as interesting in that. Or it hasn't always, but it strikes me as interesting now. That a generation that was born off of games that were hard and buggy and soul-crushingly difficult. That we have grown up uh, to construct a new world of that coddles the player. That holds the player's hand and tells them to go here and go there. Man, that's not what we grew up with. That's not what we knew. That's not what we know. <clears throat> um, and yet, as much as you can complain about how hard the games were back in the days of the NES and how buggy they were and the low QA, they were still good enough to create something that would go on and become a major part of, of, of modern day entertainment. Mm -hmm. So we have since then tried to pander and some of this I blame on the Wii because and, and you know this is a, a discussion in and of itself but the truth of the matter is is um, people talk about how the Wii created a new audience and I don't think that that's true. I think what the Wii did was it tapped a different audience that mainstream gamers were largely ignorant of, and that's the casual gamer. Casual gamers, despite you know the, the, the casual qualifier, casual gamers spend as much, if not more money on video games than what we would consider mainstream or hardcore gamers. It's a huge market. It, it's what gave, it, it's what created it's what created Angry Birds and Candy Crush Saga and uh, uh -uh. what the Wii did was not so much as create a new market. What it did was it just took that already existing market and got them buying consoles. Um, all of that said. We exist now in, in a generation of video gaming where video games try to capture big, broad markets. Have and a good night, Kazama. Try. Sorry, I'm, I'm paying attention. Have a good night, Kazama. He wants to play with us sometime, hopefully. Yeah. And they aren't trying to... Thank you. Um, I like to tender my thanks, but I haven't much to offer. All I can give... They, the games aren't trying to... Be the game first. You see oh, what I'm saying? Come close. Don't worry. Oh, I got I got the horse, the blood of Ariana. Oh, hello. Hello, it, it it heals you and it gives you increased stamina. Oh. Uh, oh wow. <coughs> replenishment for for a period of time. Oh, it looks like and, you can but only, you have, can only one? have one at a time. That's yes. Does she, will she give you another one if you use it? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's kind of useful for a boss. Mm hmm Very useful. Holy shit. I love that on a boss. Here's Eileen. She's sitting outside of the church. Oh, hello. Perfect. See, and I don't get Eileen. Okay, after you kill... Uh, um, after you kill... Amal what, what, who, uh, uh, what are you, who are you helping? People kill? Vicar, I mean, or Vicar, yeah, Amelia. Amelia Once you help people kill Amelia, she will appear outside the church. You need to talk to her. And then I, I just I figured out what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to walk from the church to and here's a death dealer. This this fuck this thing. You have to walk from the church <coughs> to the uh, the place where you fought Gassion. You gotta walk. From that bond, from that lantern to the next. Oh no, this is not good. Oh no, oh no, no, no. And then you have to help her kill whoever she's fighting. 
No, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Motherfucker. Damn these death dealers, they hurt. Oh my fuck. They're more scary than they were before. Now I gotta, now I gotta run back. Great. That's fucking great. Um, she will appear at the church, then you have to walk to the... You have to walk from there to where you fought uh, Gastone. Actually, you have to... You talk to her, she says she has a mark. Then you have to go back to the dream, then come back to the to the cathedral again, and then walk to the other place. Mm. Supposedly she's gonna be there. I'm gonna try no, it it's now. It's gonna be a while before I do Amelia on my own. Well, you won't do it on your own, you'll do it with the beckoning bell. You'll ideally have two people to help you. Great. Now I'm in Yargol, the unseen village. Or Yahargol. Whatever. This place is... This place is cancer. When you get sent here, you'll, you'll understand. Oh, I'm sure. You keep saying it's in-game content, and I'm like, yo... It's not, it's not just in-game content, it's the last... You, you remember how you noticed the other tombstones teleporter things? That's, this is from the last one, the, the one at the very, actually, you know what, I might have lied. Might be the, it might be from the second to the last one, because the last one is from the nightmare. Which is technically not a real place. <coughs> I don't know who she is, and I don't know why, how to talk to her any other way. So one of the interesting things about, so, so going back to that bit, all of that, what is interesting about Bloodborne is that it succeeds on its own merits. It does not attempt to... <clears throat> it does not attempt to soften it up. It does not attempt to hold the player's hand. It does not do anything it, 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 it's Nintendo hard and it's unabashedly so it's it's oh, it, it, it's not a shame to be that hard and I think that's an important aspect to what we see here um, Oh great. My quick silver my quick silver bullets are maxed out in my stash too. So now every time I go to pick up a quick silver bullet, it's gonna bring up a big fucking menu, a big fucking window on my thing and tell me. You can't do that right now. It's gonna piss me off too. <coughs> and I'm out of Yargle. Just to let you know it's easy, but you gotta know where to go. This motherfucker. Wow, you got warped, son. Oh, he's got a top hat. I like it. Okay, so if you do Eileen's whole quest, you can equip the uh, Carol rune, the hunter, which is goes in the oath slot. Um, it appears that when a hunter of hunters, so basically when you're part of the uh, covenant, when you join a fellow member of this covenant, it has a chance to make them an adversary rather than a co-op partner. So it's like, it's like Russian roulette. So you, so I, for you, you probably wouldn't want to stick with that covenant, but you can gain the benefit of the rune. Um, yeah, you can gain the benefit of the rune, at least, when you're playing alone. 
And it, and you can join and leave covenants as simple as just taking it off. Cathedral reward. I don't think I talked Tylene all the way. I can't wait till you see your first death, first death dealer. Oh wait, wait, wait! You know where to see your first death dealer. You want to know so you know what to stay away from or what to be cautious of. I can tell you where he is. No, nope. he's right outside of the cathedral where Eileen is chilling. You go outside the door and then you make a right, and then to the right of the there's you'll see a staircase behind the little wagon. And if you go to the right of the staircase, he's in the corner back there. So if you want to know what a death dealer looks like, I would recommend... I don't know if you can kill him with a saw, because I abuse his, the ability to knock him back with the weapon I use. I can knock him on his ass. But you don't have a method to do that, so I would recommend just running back to the bonfire and not never going back there again. Okay, she said don't go to the tomb. She has business there, so I'm going to go to the dream. Where is our host? My stream quality is intermediate. I think I'm going to do her quest, just... I really don't want to. Jack the Ripper gear. He's got a top hat, and he's got one of those, like... Duster coats, you know, the kind with the cape? Oh, yeah. Queen of the Vile Bloods. So do you know the do you know the story? Do you understand the story? Somewhat. Um, but I haven't I haven't looked it up. It's just I know what I see, basically. <laughs> Which is much as you'll I know the last time I tried this I died. For every for every time you play through this, you'll start piecing together more and more of what you think the story is. Um, but outside of that, if you want the actual God, story, you gotta, damn. like, wiki. You gotta wiki it, basically. Ugh. <clears throat> Ooh, if you can if you can afford the gay wolf or the gray wolf set. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's the Ashen Hunter set. The the headpiece though is called the Gray Wolf Cap. That whole mm -hmm. set just by itself is really nice for defense for defense. If you just want gotcha. solid, if, if you just want a solid defensive. For some reason, Let's... I can purchase it at uh, the Insight vendor, but I I don't think that's where you're. You always get it. I, I thought See, I'd the, it. See, the, uh, the Giskion, or whatever the hell that guy's name is, one of the... Er Gassion? The uh, Gassion. That's the only armor set that I could buy at the Insight vendor. I'll be right back. Okay.
I don't know if this is going to work because this didn't work last time. I'm not expecting it to work. I don't know why I'm attempting to join her covenant. Horrible gesture. A curtsy. Oh, why did I do that? You know. Uh, I got someone in my channel. Don't bother trying to read this. Is his name? <laughs> hey, don't bother. Welcome to the stream. Um, you know Yahtzee's probably set to review this game tomorrow. I thought you, you said that the other day and I was like looking at zero punctuation going, oh my god, when is it? When am I going to get it? So it's well, tomorrow? You know he's gonna, I don't know. Actually, you know what? I'll look it up on the Escapist website. <sighs> because he does... YouTube is always a week, is always a week behind. So maybe the next time I step away from the, con uh, I'll go pop up onto my laptop real quick and check it out. <clears throat> um, I am really curious to see uh, cause I'll be honest with you. Wow, you're the first one to get the name right. <laughs> How is this game good? Better than Dark Souls or worse? Oh shit, there's a hunter here. What the fuck? What the fuck? Different. The answer to that question is, is an unequivocal different. Yeah. And so, Bunny is a damn expert. Are you on fucking Souls joking games. me? I just got wrecked by whoever that was, and I thought Eileen was supposed to be here. She is here! What the fuck was she doing? AF Kane? No way! Oh my god, I got wrecked by a hunter that I'm supposed to help Eileen kill, and she was just AFK. I think she bugged out. Um, yes, this game is... I don't know if... I, yeah, I would say it's different than Dark Souls, but it's very, very good. I'm enjoying the fuck out of it right now. Actually, one of the big things that you missed on Bother is that I've kind of been reviewing the game <laughs> sort of online in this little stream. Yeah, um, he's been giving his actually, thoughts. And my final thought, really, is the last big point that I wanted to talk about is the storytelling. Is This is old, good old school video game style storytelling. This is... You go back and you play like Ghouls and Ghosts, or you, you go back and play like any of the NES style games. And like you, you, your story was a paragraph written in a manual somewhere. And that was it. And you kind of had to come up with everything else on your own. And so, you know, that's that's where this is, is, I mean, the story can be so... I'll tell you this right now, I am... I am lost in the story, I want to know more. <clears throat> but it doesn't do, it doesn't... It tells the story by just forcing you to experience it. Man, it, it kind of reminds me of the way Yahtzee described Dark Souls, which was, you know, you could sit there and wonder if, you know, there is something to the tombstone that the big giant wolf with a sword in its mouth is guarding, or you could just kill it because it's another big thing. Like, <laughs> that's how this game is, is like, you could just go ahead and kill all of the things, or if you... 
that wasn't necessary. And, and, or if you yeah, want, sense. you can sit there and Maybe really the soak the story in. But you're going to soak the story you in. Must have killed as it's well. like tea. You sip it. You, you're not going to guzzle the story. It's not going to force feed all these cutscenes down your throat. You're going to you're gonna get very, very small little scraps here and there. You know what else it reminds me of, Wes? What? Um, <laughs> Fatal Frame. And I'll tell you why. Fatal Frame was unique in that every monster that you fought in Fatal Frame was a part of the story, was a character in the story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this game is kind of like that in this aspect. Like, there is nothing that you fight that is just someone created a monster to kind of be a challenge here like everything and this is this is i i salute this game it does a, an a, astounding job of it does an astounding job of making every monster that you fight have gravity have purpose like every monster every every creature that you encounter in this game you feel like they had a story like the mob the first mob that you first encounter Ooh. like you feel like these were residents of this town at one point in time who have undergone this whatever curse is going on uh, like Vicar or Amelia with uh the pendant that she's holding at the beginning of the fight and she clutches through the whole fight and then you get it at the end mm -hmm. it sort of gives you like a backstory if you look at the pendant um and uh don't bother also made a good point he said he wants to see a game like this but more of an mmo rpg i can actually see a game like this being an mmo and i first that thought first occurred to me there is a uh, forest zone that you will get to at some point it mm -hmm. is so fucking huge that I was like, this game could be an MMO. Like, I can imagine walking into the zone in an MMO Dark Souls, Bloodborne, whatever style, like a, a Souls game. I could see a Souls game being an MMO where you walk into these massive fucking zones with with some friends and it's, they're just like, you know, sort of like the dungeons you would do in uh But you um, know what though, you know what though? Oh God, uh, Tinkerbell. Huh? Remind me to, remind me to talk about Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell? The over. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause I spoiled the shit out of my kids this week. Yeah, and, and Anyways, it, um, don't bother. We also knew. He, I think he knows what I'm talking about. That forest is fucking huge. It's MMO. It's MMO size. To me, for one, to make this a full-on MMO would be a mistake. And the reason why I say that is because. I think one of the things that kind of builds here is the sense of loneliness. Right. Well, but then it's also pervades. meant to be played. I mean, I'd say MMO in the terms of... Maybe MMO is not really a good word because MMO sort of implies that you're surrounded by tons of people. More, uh, I think that it should, in, it should have a lot... Like, MMO, uh, it should have an MMO universe. Like, this this game could be transformed into an MMO, like, being extremely huge. Remember how you were saying earlier that you thought this game was, like, really huge? And it's... Yeah. It's only reasonably huge. They could increase the size of it much, much more. Maybe add a hub. Like, uh, an off-to-the-side an off, an off to the side hub where you like, can see other players. Like Hunter's Dream? Yeah, but not, like, main. Because Hunter's Dream is main, and it, it would cut into the feeling of loneliness. But maybe, mm -hmm. like... Maybe like a couple covenants where you, they have their own hubs where you can see other players, you know, for that MMO feel. But I can imagine a game like this doing large scale. I don't know. But I don't know if I don't know if the gaming industry has the capability of pulling something off like that yet. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it. I what like I what they do. do. I, I even like you know as much as. I like the multiplayer that we do. Like when we go, like when we did Dying Light, we just say, hey, we're gonna go do Dying Light together. 
and we played through it the whole way through or you know like mass effect 3 where it was like let's go sit in the lobby and we're gonna go do these 20 30 minute matches which god i missed that game uh what call of duty no mass effect 3 oh oh shit i'm sorry i don't know why i thought you were mentioned call of duty right now yeah uh that's fun that was a fun one i wish i could stream um, you know, technically I could. You you gave me the capture card, and I'm I learned about bit rates, so I could at some yeah, point. Yeah, but I also sold it. You sold your PS3? No, I sold Mass Effect 3. Oh, you didn't have the digital. Wait, did I even have? I don't have the digital. Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> no. Um. So you know, it, it's it's. I like the way no they do them. You know, as much as it would, as much as I kind of want to say, yeah, hey, you know, it would have been cool if we could have just hopped into a party and then rocked this game from beginning to end. And as annoying as it was for the Souls games, it works for this game. Yeah, and they've and they've improved I, it for Dark Souls too. They 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 worked on that a lot. They they added a lot of things to make it um, more easy to get into a game with it's 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 simplified in this game but it's basically the same concepts that they yeah. didn't that they added to dark souls 2 they just simplified it in this game basically slap you can give you an option to slap a password on and what the fuck is that oh shit okay okay i don't like this place okay the area that i told you to the left of Amelia's boss room, the one mm -hmm. where it's like you have to go there alone. It is. It will lead you to like a witch's village kind of thing. It's the next air. It's the next zone that you need to work on. And I hate this place. Mm. The transitioning point. This is this is like a transition point, and it is nasty here. So have you ever played the Skyrim MMO? Uh, by Skyrim MMO, do you mean like Elder Scrolls Online or the MMO mod for Skyrim? Because they someone someone was working on a on a mod to allow you to play Skyrim Online, which is kind of funny. You never got to play Skyrim, yeah. did you, Kyle? I I got to a point to where I kept getting destroyed, like. I could not go anywhere without getting killed by a dragon. Uh, oh. Oh, I'm so, dead. I'm so 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 dead. And it was like, my character was not... My character was not ready for that. And yet, no matter which direction I went, I kept getting just worked over by dragons, and I just got fed up. And I was like, this is... I made it. Ooh, damn. Ultimately so bad design. And I know it's not bad design because the game did amazing and it became, it had like this huge pop culture thing and it's, yada, yada, yada. It's fun, but um, Elder Scrolls 3 was a better game. And I, uh, it's a game that does, that I think you would appreciate in terms of Elder Scrolls games because it doesn't hold your hand. It's, it's similar to this game. So, uh, like... I mean, I... <sighs> And the, the thing is, is you know what? You know what? The the last role playing game that I really had fun with, huh? Final Fantasy VII. Hmm. And before that, the original Final Fantasy, and Dragon, and the original Dragon Warrior. Like, I did you ever play never... Final Fantasy Tactics? Uh, I did, and I am not good at strategy games, oh, even turn-based strategy games. Damn, Final Fantasy. I, if you had, if I had to pick one, I would off the top of my head, I would pick Final Fantasy VIII or Final Fantasy IX as being my favorite. But I, I always forget about Tactics because I think Tactics was the best one in this whole series, the whole damn series. I think Tactics was the best game. And you know something? There was what was it? There was the. Yeah, hold on. Um, this was back before I got my PlayStation 3 and I had a GameCube. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Opening it. 
Mm. No, oh. I had a PlayStation 2. Sorry, my roommate showed up with food. Um, I had a PlayStation 2, and but there was no Final Fantasies coming out, except for the stupid-ass online Final Fantasy 11. Oh. And Final Fantasy 10 sucked. And... It's... 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 Go ahead. Final Fantasy is... Holy shit. Why did you buy all these candles? <laughs> oh my god. Which yeah, I know. Um, I saw them. I was, uh... Oh, uh, sorry. I, uh, I don't... got a GameCube. I ended up getting a GameCube. And I played Final Fantasy, the uh -huh. Chronicles of the... Or the Cri Chronicles of the Crystal Chalice or whatever. I gotta eat. And... Huh? I gotta eat food. I gotta eat food. Food arrived. Um, don't bother said he's a fan of Diablo 2, 3, Diablo 2 and 3 and Path of Exile. Those are great games. I like them. Diablo 3 is not as good as Diablo 2, though. What? I, you know what, what? for, for, oh. for, for what it was, I truly enjoyed Diablo 3 on the PlayStation. Oh yeah, but you also missed out on Diablo 2, so... <coughs> is this mine? Um... Yeah. Uh, and oh. maybe it's because I played the original Diablo on. Excuse me for eating sounds. The, uh, I'm sorry. I played I played the original Diablo on the I'll mute my uh, mic. PlayStation no, first. I I prefer Diablo. I prefer to play Diablo with a controller. They deserve the full experience of your stream. <laughs> what are you eating? A shrimp burrito from El Pollo Loco. Dude, why don't you all ever cook? Y'all are the most non-cooking ass uh, motherfuckers ever. We cook sometimes. We just did spaghetti the other night. Yeah. And oh, we also have a tri-tip that we need to cook. Oh, that reminds me. Before I go to bed tonight, I have to start marinating some chicken for the girls tomorrow. Tell them I said what's up, brother, from another mother. Oh. What's up, Albert? He, he heard you. Enter the world of IG-1987. Yo. Mm. Don't bother. If I am interpreting... If I am interpreting this dude's name the way I think it is, he is 10 years younger than I am. Uh, <coughs> don't bother. I was... Sad. um. Elder Scrolls, when it came out, was really disappointing. But from what I've been seeing, the Elder Scrolls Online, from what I've seen, it seems to have been doing a lot of improvements lately. It might but, be worth... Know, at the I, same time, I mm. don't know why people even bother. Thank you for the... Thank you for the follow. I just got the update. Thank you so much. Don't be the one trying to read Like... No, it says don't bother. Seriously... <laughs> I'm the only one who read it right, he said. So far, even you read it wrong. Go ahead. What are like, you saying, Kyle? Why, why make an MMO if it's not World of Warcraft? Seriously. Uh-huh. Well, and I mean, I'm, I'm not trying. Try. You know something? You know, you know who, who had the best, biggest shot? At, at, you know who had the best shot at doing over. something unique and good like and something that could have really rivaled that, World of Warcraft and who fucked it? <coughs> you know who did that? Hello? Hello? Hey, hang on. Sorry, I'm here. Um, Albert was telling me something. What happened? Do you know who had the best shot at really giving World of Warcraft a, a, a run for its money, in my opinion, and they fucked it to hell? What? Come on, you did it with me. What? Final Fantasy? No. Destiny. Oh. Yeah, they made it hella grindy. <clears throat> if de- it well, and uh, you know, no, I mean, MMOs are supposed to be grindy. Let's not fuck around here. World of Warcraft is not that grindy. I mean, there are I things that you grind, the... but they aren't—they aren't like <clears throat> super mind-numbing. Like they—they make 
they make the grinds. The worst grind is leveling up. Mm. Ooh, and that's not even that. And it's not even that bad. Cutting, 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 cutting. Amelia cutscene? Yes. So what, he really gets along with a black hat? Like, close the door. Oh, snap. Get out the door crying and crying and crying. <coughs> Mm. Mm. That would explain why when I came home, Ragnar was really interested in what was outside the door. <laughs> so, so, anyways, alright, back to what we were talking about while... I let everyone else tank Amelia, and I just kind of like snap around to the behind. <laughs> mm. He said, I think Diablo 3 had a cool story. <coughs> Amazing cutscenes where Path of Exile didn't have a good story, but nice gameplay. Well, and that's the thing, it is, is <clears throat> Path of Exile was really all about the gameplay. Oh, you yeah. know, it, it was a free game. It was low budget. It was let's provide you with, and, and I liked it to be honest with you. I liked Path of Exile. I kind of wish we would have stuck with it, but they are still adding so much to that game that if we ever jump on con a computer again for any reason, that could be an option because they are they are okay. doing so much to that game. Uh, I I I subscribe. And I read all their patch up, uh, patch notes as much as I can. Oh, this group is rocking Amelia hard. Doing so much more work than the last group did. Path of Exile will always be a game worth going back to. <clears throat> well, it's it's a it's a labor of love. It is. A game that people who really believe in the project and oh wow, they uh... apparently the is... long-awaited Act Four for um, Path of Exile is coming out soon. Oh really? Yeah. A testament to all the stuff they've been adding. Well, not really a testament. It's hard to explain how much they've added. It's just it's a lot. So it's, a taco. it's no, I mean, to me, all right. So going back to Destiny, the Destiny, it wasn't too grindy for me. I, to be honest with you, I like a grind. I like well done grinding. Hmm. It's not. It's not about too much grind for as far as I'm concerned. It's about. It's, uh... Boom, bitch. Get out. It's that there wasn't enough content to go with the grind. That's what upsets me. Yeah. Having this fight... And also, it didn't have enough variety for the grind, either. For, Which, for what they had, because you know basically the the higher difficulties of one boss just meant higher health. So one boring fight lasted for what, like twenty minutes. So there are two things I have to say about that. For one, and that would have been fine, if their expansions were really good expansions. Like, when they lifted their, went for the first expansion, lifting your level cap up by two levels, uh, to me... That was it? ...is a slap in the face. What the fuck? It was two? Two, yeah. Their level cap went from 30 to 32. 30 to 32. Wow. They added one raid. You know... 
Now, See, here's the other thing, and it... If you go and you... And that's... that's what World of Warcraft has on that is... Raids in World of Warcraft are not added through expansions. They're added through patches. Expansion comes out with one raid um, that will come out of, usually will come out after the first patch because the beginning of the expansion, the level cap is higher, everyone has to get the new gear. They give you about, they give you a couple weeks, they patch the game with the new raid, they leave the raid there for a while, and then they release, they, they advertise the next raid that's going to come out, and they add that <clears throat> at a later patch. And they uh, scale down the difficulty of the previous raid a little bit. And, um, yeah, they, they, they add raids through patches, so they have a lot, there's a lot more of them. There's a lot, lot more of them. Not having a matchmaking system for the raid was a problem. Hmm. World of and... Warcraft actually added that, but it's not a good thing. Not like you would think. Well, for Destiny, it would be a good thing. It would be, because... First-person shooters, yeah. you you can't completely suck at. <laughs> but matchmaking in WoW was more of just an opportunity to learn a boss, learn what the boss does, not actually defeat it. And uh, we didn't stop playing. Don't bother ask why we guy why we stopped playing PC. We didn't specifically stop playing PC. We just don't stream from it as much, or at least I don't stream because from it as much. You decided to stop being a part of the. PC Master Race? I will always be a part of the PC Master Race. It's just, I got the PS4 and... It has an easy streaming and I've always wanted to stream. The only problem is... I guess my stream quality is intermediate right now. And that's kind of a bummer. <clears throat> Anyways... Go ahead. What you were saying about, um... Um... I think... What oh, they did oh, with the, the expansions. the other thing about Destiny... The other thing about Destiny, though... And look this up. Look this up, because this is some shit. This is some serious shit. There is a lot of conspiracy theory going on, going on when it comes to... Because to be honest with you, I am still not unconvinced. I, I still may go through. When they released both of their patches, I may go through and go back and go back to playing Destiny again. Because the core game I enjoyed. And... Um, but... If you go through... There was a lot. There is conspiracy theories about there being a lot. And I mean a lot of content that was cut. Really? And um, the prevailing conspiracy theory with Destiny is that it was cut by Activision because they were worried that they would not be able to sell mu they will they, that they wouldn't be able to milk enough money out of the process oh with the amount with the amount of content that originally that Bungie wanted to put into this game right so the traveler I don't know how much you remember of destiny do you remember the traveler yeah hold on one second I have a PS4 as well, but I just got a PC a month ago, and I love... Gmod is Gary's mod, I believe. Oh. And I'm a huge fan of RPG games. I have, I have a ton of games on PC. If I ever stream from PC, I stream a little bit of everything. Um, the Traveler... I thought the Traveler was uh, the one that came from the moon. The little moon planet thing that came up. Yeah. Who was the Traveler? Well, and this is the thing. So, the destiny that we were given, the destiny that we saw, right? Yeah. The Traveler was this thing that came to Earth, and it jumped our technology capabilities way, way up into the future. Like the Doctor. And then all of a sudden, all the... Huh? It's the Doctor. Go on. All right, it, 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 it really... I remember. It, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people out there who look and see that there, 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 there are hints and clues that the Traveler was really supposed to be a bad guy. Uh-huh. And that, and, and actually, if you pay attention to, like, some of the alien races that we fight, like... 
they were victims of the traveler in the past oh jesus what the fuck is this guy's game this the guy other races in the game off. yeah the ones that you fight or the ones that you play yeah. as no, oh. no the ones that you fight they they they, they were I, I I can't fuck with this guy's game right here. He's he's all backwards. He's all fucked up. Can you put a straw in my drink? What did you get me, by the way? Oh, thank you. Um. I, can you put a straw in my drink? No. Did they have tea there? Uh, I don't know. I didn't check. We should check next time. Mm. Dude, I made my own tortillas not too long ago. I'm eating a Pollo Loco's shitty tortilla chips. For some reason, they're good right now. Mm. They're probably the worst potato uh, tortilla chips I've ever had, though. Mm. I'm gonna make my for the first time. Well, not like it's a big deal. I'm gonna make my uh, matchstick fries. I'm gonna cut potatoes very, very thin into very thin pieces. Throw them in the mm -hmm. oven. I'm gonna try it. There's a recipe online where you just add a little olive oil and pepper, and you throw it in mm -hmm. there. You don't have to boil anything or anything. I gotta go back. That dude. Okay. That dude Bye. summoned me into a shit game. I'll be right back. Summoned you into a what? Okay. Alright. Food's done. I'm. So yeah, I play a lot on PC. Don't bother. Um, I play League. And that sounds really basic bitch of me, but I played League before everyone played League. <laughs> um, I enjoy League. I don't play any of the other MOBAs though, just because... Or the other Dota style games or whatever, how the hell do you call it? Because I briefly played the uh, the mod that the game is based on, and then League of Legends started coming out, and I was like, oh. But I have like a shit ton of games. I have a a Steam account that's loaded up with a bunch of games. Some of them I haven't even really played yet. Um, I have all the Blizzard games. <laughs> I really, really like um, <clears throat> modding uh, Elder Scrolls. Right, I got I'm League when nobody knew what it was. I never opened the box. So here's the deal. I'm, I'm either going to so For as long as I am buzzing as hard as I am right now, I am just going to do assists. If I sober up before it's time for me, before I decide it's time for me to go to bed, I may make one honest run at Amelia. But no, the big, the prevailing conspiracy theory with Destiny is that Bungie really did have this big, expansive universe. The void, that place you visit. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, was supposed to be a playable area. Um, all kinds of things. The Traveler ultimately was going to be something that was revealed to be a, uh, a villain and not a hu not you know, a force for good. All of this stuff was supposed to be in the game. And uh, the, 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 the prevailing conspiracy theory is that Activision said, no, you can't do that. We need... You can't put all of this in one game. We need something that we can market and we can make money <laughs> off of. Yeah, and that sounds like something they would do because aren't they the ones that are like constantly selling like <sighs> maps on Call of Duty? Isn't that the company that's doing that? They're the ones. That's them, right? Yeah, I mean, but you know what? I Instead will say just this. releasing all the maps. As much as Call of Duty is often looked as looked upon as the evil video game franchise of ever. You know something? 
they put it into a three-year development cycle. Yeah, I remember you were telling me that. I remember. And that, to me, is... It's a lot of... it's... it's... they're putting good work into it. <laughs> and, and you know something? I can't... I, I would be lying if I didn't say that I was a little bit excited to find out what exactly the next Call of Duty... Because Treyarch <laughs> is making the next Call of Duty game. Mm. Uh, Treyarch's the one that made the Black Ops. Right. Um, and... Don't, don't... hold on. Don't bother said... Never played World of Warcraft. Kind of afraid how addicting it might be. But I like Diablo and Starcraft. World of Warcraft, in terms of MMOs, <clears throat> is the best MMO out there. And it's not. Uh, this is not a fanboy statement. It's just that it is the most successful, and it's long-standing yeah. has done its best to deliver content, quality it, it content to the fans. Off, and and to, get, to give you some history on MMOs. Um, Ultima Online was the first big commercial MMO. Because I don't know if you even know this. Do you know where MMOs really got their beginning from? No. I assumed it was like EverQuest. Because I remember when EverQuest... No, no. EverQuest was late to the game. I, I figured that um, it couldn't have been the early, but that's the earliest I remember. Actually, uh, 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 there are some people who, who, who say that MMOs really got their start with uh, what's often called a mud or mush. Mush. Uh, multi-user delusion or multiple user shared hallucina hallucination. And this is kind of cool. This the, was something uh, that I got into a lot. Um, and I'm sure you won't be shocked when I explain it. I heard These were... Um, hang on, hang on. I heard its population dropped a lot over the years, but I might try it. The, um, the population did drop, but I mean, you're, you're talking about... Population probably capping around 15 million and dropping to only about At its lowest point, I think it dropped to about 7 million and that was probably in the expansion that was the least popular But it's is that the panda one? I Don't I think it was cataclysm that actually dropped to seven about seven or eight million But it's been it's been steady between eight to 11 million Roughly, and it's it, but that's and that's steady, and that's not bad at all, actually. The, it, you don't have to worry about, oh, are there going to be people to play with? There is always people to play yeah. with. You just have to be careful what server you join because when you make a new an account, when you when you're first starting your account, um, the the game will automatically suggest a server for you that is low population. Low population servers can be kind of depressing and boring and empty. But if you go to one of the higher population servers that aren't full, there is a lot going on. Every, each server has its own personality and um, set of personalities, as in, uh, a, like, known players. Um, like, I run on Kill Jaden, it's one of the, the first servers, so it is a... <clears throat> it was one of the first servers, so it is... Um, it's, it's very animated, it's got a lot of players that have been there from the beginning, and... A lot of personalities that everybody knows, and a lot of popular Twitch players play there. But there's a lot of Twitch players, a lot of popular Twitch users that play on other servers as well. You just have to pick a good server. You want to pick a server that people are on. Um, so, to give you <coughs> Ultima history, Online. No, it even starts before then. Um, well, you were telling me about people... what Ultima Online was. You were going to tell me something about that. Well, yeah, and I was going to go before. I was actually going to rewind from there, actually, a little bit. Um, a multi, a mud or a mush was actually text based. And it was the, be the best way I could explain it was it was kind of like the Internet's version of um, egg timer stories. I don't in, know what that in is. In that. It, an egg timer story is a thing where um, you get uh, you get an egg timer, right? And you have someone start a story, and and you set the egg timer for like a minute. Someone starts telling a story, and then after the egg timer goes off, someone else takes up for them. Huh? Um. Oh, Jesus, I am not ready for this area. Um, and that's kind of what a mud was, or a mush. Um, um, they were online. You usually needed a mud or a mush, or a mud client, or a mush client. It was all text-based. 
you could go from point A to point B and there would be all these stock descriptions. So like you're in this room. So let's say you were in, I was in a Buffy the Vampire Slayer one. You know, you uh. could go to the school and it, you know, you go to the school and there would be a description of the school. And there would be other people there. And you would choreograph with people to create these scenes. You know, um... Let's say I had a character and there was another character and like, Hey, let's do a fight scene or let's do this type of scene or whatever. And you would act it out. You would act it out through texting or through text-based commands and stuff like that. Um, some of these would actually have built-in mechanics and, rope and, and, and number schemes and everything like that so that you could have fighting on all this stuff. So that's where some people think that all of this really started was with these MUDs and MUDs. Um, Ultima Online was the first commercial MMO that I can think of. And it was two-dimensional, top-down. And to my mind, it was actually one of the best ones still. Because... <clears throat> that one really had... Pure freedom. Like... If all you wanted to do with your life was open a restaurant, you could actually build a plate, build up, build a building. Well, you could become a master at cooking. You could hire people who are master musicians, and you could just have a restaurant. Um, it did not go off of a level-based system whatsoever. Everything was zero to one hundred percent for every skill that was there, and the way to get better at skill was to continue to. Um, redo that skill. The problem with Ultima Online was that it was ripe for exploitation. Uh, excuse me. If all you had to do to improve the skill to 100% was to continue to do the skill over and over again, obviously, and, and people, you know, back then I would, you know, people were telling me, like, take a band aid and, you know, go and build a macro, take a band aid. Uh, use the band-aid to hold down these keys that you attach to the macro and then go to bed and when you wake up all of a sudden you're a master with them. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <clears throat> um, so it did. It had some exploits and the PvP was kind of ridiculous in that like there I, I still even to this day I still recall there was a clan, or actually it was like two clans that worked together, that were affiliated. It was Knights of Terror and Murder, Death, Kill. And like, they had gotten so good at what they did, it, it literally broke the game. <laughs> um, you went to their website and you would see, uh, if you went to their website, you would see pictures and and I still remember these I went to their website one time and there was one picture where <coughs> it was it was a it was a two it was two pictures and in the first picture it, it showed um, the screen was full of people uh -huh. and it was um, the, the the caption for it was MDK three, the other guild twenty seven, <clears throat> and then the second picture was three people standing amid a bunch of dead bodies, uh. and the, the caption was MDK three, the other guild zero. <laughs> and then they had like another picture of the caption was MDK saying hi to the local moderator. And you see this one moderator, and everyone knew what moderators were because they were always in like this gray hood and cape. Yeah. And just engulfed in the room. And you see like these three or four people just working this dude over. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember I was just starting off in the game, and I was. I saw this one guy, and he had this like big arch demon following him around. And <laughs> um, and 
I remember seeing it and I was trying not to be like all noobish, so um when I saw the pet, I was all I was all nice pet. And uh the guy who owned it just said a hey, kill. And understand like people when they when they summon when you summon your pet, you had to give it a name. So people would just give it like one later name, and I'm like, a hey, what? Uh, <laughs> and then this arch demon just stomped a mud hole <laughs> in me. Um, so as awesome as Ultimate Online was, as much freedom as it seemed to give, um, you, it, it was broken. <laughs> I wonder if uh, in Diablo 2 lobby, in Diablo 2 lobbies, there was uh, uh, moderators were cloaked figures, like gray cloaked figures. I wonder if that's a reference to like yes. Ultima Online or like a nod um, to, to that. And then everyone moved to... Uh... Everyone that I everyone that I knew moved to EverQuest and I will say when I first My first time playing EverQuest was favorable Because it was like all of a sudden it's like oh my god There's this whole world and it's so beautiful and you can explore it Beautiful um, for its time <laughs> Yes, beautiful for its time Uh and I played it for a while, and actually, I gained some notoriety. I was... <coughs> the most powerful character under level 20 on the server. That was a thing? Like, non-max level yeah. characters? Yeah, and, and the reason- and I don't know, it, it was because I politicked a lot. Um... People called me the Sheriff of the North. <laughs> because I played on a PvP server and I was a barbarian. And, uh... I don't know, like, anytime someone... Anytime someone tried to PvP unfairly in the North, and I can't remember what I deemed what was unfair and what was fair. But anytime someone tried to be... I'm basically an asshole in the north. I would kind of like Round everybody up I'd round a policy up and basically shit on that person <laughs> And I remember we had this one episode where I'd gotten information that Knights of Terror from Ultima Online Wanted to run a raid on the north and kill everybody It was kind of cool. I even remember taking screenshots and posting it to a website at one point. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> I had a hundred people, which for that time and that server was kind of impressive. I had, I had a hundred people ranging from all levels sitting at the entrance to that zone just waiting. And, um, it was kind of funny. This guy, we're, we're just sitting there waiting and we're joking and yada, yada, you know how, you know how it is. <clears throat> and we see this guy come through the zone and he had the little Knights of Terror clan tag on top of his head. And he tipped one, tip one look. I think someone shot an arrow at him. And then he ran his ass off back into the, and that was it. That was the end of the whole thing. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> See, I think so you would. Well, there's there's the world PvP aspect, which that, that's what it sounds like, basically. Um, <clears throat> I think you would, in, even if it wasn't the actual World of Warcraft, I think you would enjoy some of the private servers, which is world, free World of Warcraft. There are private mm -hmm. servers that hold the older expansions in, um, 
some of them are pay to win like you can pay the moderators of these servers and to get stuff and be awesome or whatever but there are there are certain a couple servers private servers that have all of the raid content at max difficulty and world pvp is completely intact as, uh, along with all of the methods of acquiring pvp gear <clears throat> And on some of these servers, like a vanilla server, if you are full PvP gear, you are basically a, a god. Like, people, like, ha having full PvP demands respect. Um, and these servers are still intact. And the world PvP in World of Warcraft, when it was intact, is still, f is fucking, it is the most fun I've ever had in an MMO. Um, and that's, there is still world PvP now, but... They added flying mounts to the game some time ago, and flying mounts kills world PvP because if someone doesn't want to engage in world in world PvP, they just get on their mount and fly away. Um, and that has killed world PvP. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but it's there. But it's just not as abundant as it was. Um, uh, you know what? There is a there is a book that I think you would really love to read <coughs> called Ready Player One. You told me about that. You told me about it. <coughs> you you would really dig that book. <clears throat> and if I've I don't play tomorrow, if I don't play tomorrow, the reason why is because um. So one of the website, one of the podcasts that I submit to, uh, um, they got a new editor. Me. Yeah. And he sent me an email. He was rejecting one of my stories, and he um. But he, he basically sent me an, an, an extra email ba saying, you know, look, you know, you're an up-and-coming writer. I really like what you got. You're the kind of writer that if you just keep writing, the stuff that you write is going to get better and better and better. And um, he, he he confirmed to me that, yes, my sto one, the story that was accepted last summer for his website, for the website he now works for, um, it's still in the chain. It's there is some lag and and he's smoothing things out So it should end up going up, but he said that he's starting something new <clears throat> He's starting a new YouTube so if I have anything submitted there So tomorrow night my, my deal is to screw some things up and oh, It's I not getting a up. lot of traffic, but hell if I end up being the story that makes this if I end up being one of the stories that gets this YouTube <laughs> channel some extra traffic, yeah, go ahead, I'll take it. I just I had a bullshit death right now, and I it was going so well. Well, I'm 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 kind of waiting to see another. Um, on 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 this topic of the the World of Warcraft thing, <clears throat> and also mm -hmm. like if we ever do go back to PC. Um, to avoid you having to, like, spend money on a game or a subscription that you're not sure if you're going to play it, we can always try a private server because I have been <clears throat> looking at a few private servers and seen a lot of really good things about a few of them on old content where world PvP is still intact, and I think it was something that you could get into, well, especially I'll since I'll it's free. Here, here's the thing, here's the thing. I know I would have a blast playing World of Warcraft. That's why I don't play it. <laughs> and it, it's funny and you laugh, but it's also true. Like, the games that I enjoy and I play, I can put down. Right. I can put them down. The last thing I need is a game that I can't put down. <laughs> well, assume you ever get to a time, I don't know if you will, you probably won't, but get a time in your life where you're just like doing nothing. That'd probably be a good time to, to pick it up. <coughs> Where you have I all day. Reach that, if I ever reach that area, then yeah, I'll let you know. But I it's just... The best. That's the best time, especially if you haven't been exposed to it before. Because when you first start World of Warcraft, if it's your first experience, it's, it's soul draining. <laughs> it really is. Because, <coughs> I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I would love...